Afternoon, out for another dog walk. And I'm just walking down through this particular little meadow, which is rather nice because it's got like a little avenue of ash trees. And it's nice to see some ash trees growing because they're having a bit of a hard time at the moment. Just like Dutch elm disease hit all our English elms a few decades ago, uh, there's a thing called ash dieback, which is a disease that's come across from the Far East. And it's killing off a lot of our ash trees. In fact, some of the more pessimistic estimates reckon we might lose at least half of our ash trees in the UK uh, over the next few years, which is tragic really, because it's a very pretty tree. But this little avenue here that we're walking down towards, um, these are all ashes here, or mostly, there's a couple of oaks in amongst them, which were there before. And I'm reminded of uh, the story last week, the rather sad story that uh, Hardy's tree has fallen down in London. Now, if you don't know Hardy's tree, here's a couple of photographs of it. It was in Old St. Well, it still is. It's just lying down now. Um, in Old St. Pancras Churchyard in London. And it's called Hardy's tree because when Thomas Hardy was a young man, before he became a famous novelist, um, he worked for a, a famous architect who was given the job of extending and building St. Pancras train station. And part of the land they had to build out onto was consecrated land. It was an old graveyard. Uh, so all the old remains had to be disinterred and then reinterred, but what they were left with was lots of tombstones. And what Hardy did, because he was a bit of a... He didn't like things changing for the new, he liked things to stay as they were. So what he did was he arranged all the tombstones in this wonderful circle pattern around the outside of the Hardy tree, as it became known. Once he became famous, that is. But sadly, the Hardy tree fell down last week, uh, partially due to the wind, but partially due to disease. And I think it's possibly ash dieback. We've had a couple of cases here. Uh, this little ash tree stump is the result of ash dieback. The tree was quite obviously diseased. So the people who managed to land here cut it back to stop it spreading. Uh, and there are a couple of others around here, which are looking a bit sickly at the moment. So hopefully someone's keeping an eye on them. All of which leads me to this little arch. Now this is reasonably new. There used to be a larger arch here, um, quite a nice one, and I photographed it a number of times at different times of the year in different weather conditions. But unfortunately it fell down at the beginning of 2022. And um, so what they've done is they've planted this new one, which is lovely. But you know, Life goes on, and the trust that manages this land, uh, this part of the AOMB, uh, are very good at replacing trees. So consequently, as you can probably see by some of the little trees around me, uh, they've planted a whole host of new trees here recently. Uh, there's a walnut, there's a plum, there's a couple of sycamores. A bit of variety, because it's mostly uh, oak trees around here. The one I was really pleased they planted a few years ago was this, uh, this sweet chestnut, just here, just here. Uh, it's a lovely tree, but unfortunately, sweet chestnuts don't really start producing nuts until they're about 20, 30 years old, and I ain't going to be around for that. But that's fine, you know, because there's an old Greek saying that a society grows great when old men plant trees under whose shade they'll never sit. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's a lovely thought that you're planning for the future. It's not all about personal gain, it's about gain for the community, about society and people in general. And that, my friends, is a lovely, lovely thing. Bye-bye. See you next time.